All right, we will now call our city council ready meeting to order for November 22nd at 6 p.m. to address the invocation and pledge of allegiance. Father, we thank you for this evening. Lord, we thank you for this guys tonight, Father. We just invite your Holy Spirit, Lord, in this meeting right now to help us make these decisions, Lord. We just ask that you bring peace to this meeting, Father. Help us any way that you can, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
Yes, ma'am. So if the lighting's at 630, is that going to leave enough time for like the kids or the parents of the kids who need to walk their kids down to the other end of the mall to so hopefully, line them up? Hopefully everybody from that's going to be watching the parade will not come to see. Right. <laughs> so. It would be the people that's in that area that will probably see it. So anyone else? Okay, you, people who are watching to see the lighting. No, it's just everybody that happens to be in the area is going to see oh, it. It's, okay. just, it's kind of a last minute thing. So we don't have enough time for, you know, a thousand people to walk to down there. Walk and and they walk down there. Yeah. But it's going to be spent. So can you consider maybe starting it at 6 instead of 6.30? Yeah, no? 6 o'clock. 6.30. It gets 30. dark at 6 15, so that's kind maybe of maybe in somewhere in there, Mary. You're absolutely right. So, yes, yeah, somewhere in there, we, we looked at the darkness of it. Uh, Marie, um, Marie, do you have anything to say? Huh? Are you do you have anything to say? I don't see this. No, you, you say it all. all right. <laughs> all right. You okay. see all of us. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> okay, and thank you all for saying okay to this. We're looking for a new tradition. Thank all you. Right. Amen. Thank you very much. Hey, you don't have time to walk out here. I'll be helping. Okay. All right. Item number six. We have the CDBG housing grant updates. It's Antonio Jenkins. There he is. A little older, a little fatter, a little baller. So I'm here. Give your uh, name and address. My that. name is Antonio Jenkins. I am with Guardian CRM. I am with the city's CDBG housing rehab grant consultant team. What do you got for us? Uh, just a little bit of an update. I try not to bore you to tears too much. Uh, and I'll give a little bit of a synopsis for new members. I see that we have a few. Uh, back in 2018, uh, city applied for CDBG housing grant. Uh, you awarded that grant back in December of 2018. That grant was for a total of $750,000. $112,500 of that went for administration. Uh, you know, for, for paper, advertisements, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, 22,000 of that is for what they call temporary relocation. When we're helping a homeowner, uh, if we have to move them out, which in this case, we're going to have to move everybody out. Everybody has asbestos. Uh, so we're going to be moving and helping people with that. It's just a small amount of money, uh, but it gets them out of the house for a couple of weeks until we can abate this best oaks or any other issues that we may be having. Mm -hmm. uh, that presents uh, kind of an unsafe living condition. And then we have $615,500 for rehab, uh, plus another $50,000 in ship match from the county. Um, so we have a total of $665,500 for rehab altogether. Uh, that is the gist of it. Uh, we have to service 11 homes. Two of those homes have to be what they call very low income households. Uh, we have accomplished that already. Uh, back in November of 2020, uh, we did all the applicant reviews. That's what took place between the year uh, from when we got the grant at the end of 2018, early 2019 uh, to about November 2020. We did all the applicant intake reviews. We did a ranking. Uh, the council in its makeup at that point in time uh, went ahead and, and reviewed that and approved that rank list that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a total of 25 applications received, and to date, uh, we have put out a total of nine of the 11 that we required to do homes to bid. Uh, we had a couple of issues with two, uh, which is why that's nine and not 11. Uh, we had a mix up with you know, a homeowner not wanting to participate, and we had a homeowner where there was a mix-up. She submitted two homes, and obviously <laughs> that's that is not allowed. Uh, so that's why we're at nine instead of eleven. Uh, that being said, though, we have inspected two additional homes. They're under what they call the Tier Two or site-specific environmental review at this particular point in time, uh, and we have two units uh, that were bid out for that first total of nine, but we bid them out as a demo replacement. That is not cost feasible in this market. Uh, at max, we have $130,000 to build a new home. The best bid we got was $160,000. Uh, so now we're reevaluating those homes and we'll just do high level uh, rehabilitation on those homes. Uh, we won't make it pretty, we'll make it safe, we'll make it livable. And that's the underlying premise of the grant uh, in and of itself. Uh, we're not scheduled to close out this particular grant uh, until June of 2022. So we're well. Uh, on page to get the grant closed out on time. Uh, there was a modification 
that extended the grant uh, from May to June. I'm not sure why we did a one month extension, uh, but we did a one month extension, so it gave me an extra month. Uh, I'm grateful for that, but other than that, that is where we are. Uh, so we're well on pace to get the grant uh, completed. We're going to service the 11 homes. We may do one or two more, uh, depending on budget, because we're not doing that demo for replacement. Uh, but again, that depends. Um, and then the next matter that's on the agenda kind of blends into this. So, do we have any questions for Antonio at this point? No. Go ahead. This is moving on into uh, item number seven. Item number seven there. Uh, this is uh, kind of a request for a secondary review for eligibility. Uh, so that Mr. Arnold Wilson can receive assistance. Uh, I'm not the intake specialist. That was the ladies at my office. So I'm going to run down a uh, series of events as it was presented to me. And I think I saw Mr. Wilson come in. Uh, and if he has anything to say uh, after I answer any questions or anything like that, then he'll be more than welcome to come up and, and, and say his, uh, you know, say his part once invited by the council. Uh, this started, again, we didn't receive Mr. Wilson's application uh, until the 12th, May, May 2020. Uh, and then from 5-12-20 to 7-7-20, his application was under review and other data uh, was being compiled by the Guardian office staff. From 7-8-2020, the application was acknowledged, uh, and then the missing information letter was sent out to Mr. Wilson saying you need, you know, you're missing something in your application is not complete, so you can't verify. And then on 8-5-2020, Mr. Wilson was in contact with my office, uh, and they had a conversation about what was missing, about what needed to happen, et cetera, et cetera. And then all the way to October 15, 2020, uh, there was additional mission information letter sent out to Mr. Wilson uh, with a 10 29 2020 uh, final deadline. Uh, and it was sent certified to Mr. Wilson's address. Uh, and it was signed by Mr. Wilson uh, for Mr. Wilson, Mr. Wilson on 10 19 20. So four days after that certified letter went out, he received it. Uh, on 11 10 2020. Uh, part of the requested information was submitted to our office. It was reviewed, uh, and another letter was sent saying you're still missing items A, B, C, and D, whatever they were. Uh, skipping way ahead to January 26, 2021, uh, Mr. Wilson apparently called the office uh, to inquire about the status of his application. Uh, and at that point in time, he was told he was placed on an alternate list. Uh, if we get through the initial ranking of people who were found eligible, he would have a chance to be entered back into the pool should funding be available. Uh, and then we go all the way up to July, uh, June, July. Uh, Mr. Wilson and my office were in contact again. Uh, he expressed to my office team that he felt that he had been unjustly evaluated by Carter. Uh, at that point in time, Mr. Wilson was told of his uh, ability to come in and challenge that review uh, as is outlined in the housing assistance plan, which is what governs how these processes work. Uh, an official denial letter uh, was sent to Mr. Wilson after that secondary review, because what happens is uh, there's the initial review, then there's a request for secondary review, which my office did, it still found you know, information missing. And then that official letter of denial was sent out. That official letter of denial was sent out because that's what allows Mr. Wilson to come and appeal, you know, before the council here. Uh, and then the process is started uh, with the letter going out. We were in contact with Mark, uh, the city manager's office, and we you know, got to the point where we are here. Uh, I've spoken to Mr. Arnold briefly. Uh, he seems to think there was a mix up in his paperwork. Uh, again, I am unaware of that. My office team is unaware of that. And that's why we want to allow him a chance to speak and clear up anything. Uh, if there's indeed something that was missed 
or there was an oversight, uh, you know, we want to correct that because that's what the grant is for. It's to provide service for everybody who's eligible as long as the budget will allow. So at this point in time, you have all of the monies allocated regardless of Mr. Wilson's allocation, right? There is there is monies pretty much allocated to everyone. Uh, I have not did an inspection and set up money allocations for a particular project until after a decision has been made. Uh, I can't, while there's an appeal, I can't rightfully sure. allocate all of those funds. What is the nature of the missing documents? Uh, from my understanding, it's mostly bank statements and pay stubs. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Wilson is not. Yeah, he is back. Okay. So I'll step down. And... Mr. Wilson, if you will, please come to the podium and give your name and address. I think that was fair to do what I've spoken. My name is Arnold Wilson, address 1412 South Carolina Avenue, Avon Park, Florida. The discrepancy that was presented to me was not so much what was missing on the application, the time and date that the application was turned in. I spoke to the clerk at that time. She informed me that bringing my application in it had to be turned in by 1029. And my application was dated and turned in on 1029. My, my ID was made by the young lady behind me's desk. However, at that particular time, Miss English, for the clerk at that uh, over the phone, advised me when notarized my signature was not. She was at lunch, or she wasn't. She wasn't there. But by her not being there, um, the clerk had. The young lady who takes the water payment, make my copies of my ID, sign the application, turn it in. And at that point, I would get a call from Ms. English to come back and have my application notarized. But that didn't happen that day. Mm -hmm. However, I turned, I did my part that day. You turned it in on the 29th, right? I turned it in on, it was dated and turned in on the 29th, yes. Okay. Within time, and the reason when I spoke with the guardian, uh, clerk at that particular juncture, she informed me that my application was graded based on that date that it was notarized. It was notarized later on that week. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's it. In other case, 22, I've done my part. If they told me that Ms. Angus was not going to notarize it, then I would sought further to get it notarized. Mm -hmm. But by me signing it, dating it, and not only that, the clerk at that time who takes the water bill mm -hmm. made copies of my ID. I spoke to Ms. English about this, and she said she, you know, sure. she would be willing to advise of, of the of the accuracy of my statement. Do we did we get a stamped date when that was actually turned in? Or? Yes, we I we have oh come on, come on. please. Mr. Wilson, you, you don't have to sit down and just Okay, and we're going to have more questions for you. So don't sure. go anywhere. We do. I did not bring the application to date, but we do have an application that's date stamp. Uh, the date stamp is after the original application deadline. You have an established deadline, 1029. Uh, any incomplete application will be submitted as an alternate at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fair to everybody. You establish a deadline. Everybody's right. aware of that deadline. If you submit your documents after that, uh, then therein lies the problem. Uh, I think our issue here, uh, if I'm understanding Mr. Wilson correctly, is that he's saying he's had his documents in. But again, those documents didn't get to Guardian for review until much later. Uh, what happened in between submission and when they got to us for review, I, I can't speculate on that. Sure. Uh, but what we know is, is we got the documents after the deadline. And Mr. Wilson is now on that alternate list. And to be clear, uh, the date that it was turned in is not the only issue you're saying that there's some other- Yeah, there are still documents. outstanding documents. Uh, according to my office, there are still outstanding documents today. to this day. Okay, so your process, if someone was to turn it in, let's say he turned it in on the 28th and you actually received it on the 28th, you took a look at it, it was not complete. 
would it still be considered not turned in until it's Correct. actually completed? Correct. It has to be a complete application. So no matter how you slice it, even if it would have been given to you on the 29th, it still would have been. It still would have been incomplete. Right. Okay. Do you, do you understand that, Mr. Wilson? No. There, this, this is, uh, when I turned my documents in to the clerk at that time, she reviewed those documents. And at that time, she agreed with me that I had the necessary documents in. It's the first, the you very first time I've heard that there's some incomplete documents in my application. The only thing that was a, a group, uh, provided for me for information from your staff was the fact that it was a date issue, not a document issue. And if it was a document issue, uh, this, this is the first time I've heard that. Never, never, I heard there. So the city, the city staff would not be able to necessarily make that determination. It would have to be the, the guardian staff. That's, 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 that's misconstrued because when they sent me the letter, the letter stated what I needed in my Who, who is they? This the okay. guardian. Okay. They sent me the, I apologize, guardian for me a document. Okay. I signed it and I gave those, 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 uh, uh, the information that was required was in there. Why would the city clerk accept something that was incomplete, knowing that I had the letter right there with me when I came up here, proved to her that I had the necessary documents? She wouldn't accept the application anyway. So that's miss. That's miss. That's miss. What was sent no. was one of the missing documents for him to sign. Uh, so that being the case, there's still outstanding, like I said, employment verification issues and things like that. Okay. Uh, so in that letter that Mr. Wilson would have uh, received and signed for, it would have outlined, this is what you're missing. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a number of attempts that were made, uh, but they were returned and then we finally sent it certified sure. uh, to, get the, to get it reconciled. Were those attempts made after the 29th? No, the only attempts made after the 29th uh, were when it became an issue between my office staff and Mr. Wilson, uh, because, again, to make sure that he's going to be on the alternate list, if we were to get to him, he still needs to be found eligible. Mm -hmm. uh, so any uh, back and forth after that point was just in contingency. And so he, after the 29th, he was made aware that he needed to have more documents. That is correct. That is correct. Okay, correct. And, I, and those documents, uh, Mr. Wilson, correct me if I'm wrong, it was an employment affidavit of some sort uh, that you'd have had to sign and turn into the clerk. And we had that. We had yeah, it. Yeah, please, please go into the microphone for your comments. Now, we're, we're now, trying to capture everything okay, on the record. Your question, I'm so sorry to take you guys through this. Mr. Beer. Your question asked him, did, Mr. Guardian, did I receive any other information after the 29th? about missing documents. No. What I was privy to was a signature and a notarized signature. That's the only information that was proven to me until now. And I've talked to you, sir, and I've talked to your office, and I've talked to my city uh, at that time, temporary clerk, and the people that was involved with this situation was all about a notarized signature. Nothing else, nothing more. Yeah. Here's here's what I will do, and I believe the city manager has this from uh, my staff. Uh, they have compiled all of the correspondence, and those correspondence has the dates on. Uh, I will make sure that I have that resent to the city manager's office, uh, and then we can get those dates outlined. Uh, and then at that point in time, uh, because I think the way it's being handled here today is it's kind of subjective. It's some back and forth sure. with me and Mr. Wilson. Uh, so just to get you concrete evidence, what I will do is, like I said, send that back to uh, the city manager's office uh, and then discuss it with him. And if I need to come back at a later date, uh, we don't need to bring Mr. Wilson back. Uh, I'll make sure he has the same documents or he's welcome to be here uh, sure. so, that, so that you can have something tangible. I think, I think that's great. Uh, Antonio, are you looking for a motion from the council or were you looking for a motion from the council? Uh, it would have been uh, for a discussion uh, as to whether Mr. Arnold Wilson would be moved from the alternate list up to the right list. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we would have you know, sought to accomplish here. Uh, but the information that my office provided me today, I just don't feel that it is uh, 
it's not enough to ask you all to make a decision. Mm -hmm. I'd rather give you more detail uh, if that makes sense. I understand. Um, just to clarify to the, to the council, so this type of appeal is not to forgive errors by the applicant. This type of appeal is to evaluate any reason why that that was not made. If, it's, if we made an error on our end, and so he's saying basically, you know, we, we don't have enough facts at this point to show you. It feels like we have evidence to that, but he needs to provide that to us, so we really can't make a decision tonight. Really, that. maybe that's good. Can I say something? Yes. Actually, in our packet is all the letters that we're provided from Guardian going to Arnold. If that's what you're talking about. That's exactly what they're, I'm they're already in their packet. That's what I'm talking about. You want a copy of that? That's a good point. That will that would work for I can I just fill up my laptop. So if if the application would have been turned in on the 29th, well, it, no, assuming it was turned in on the 29th, correctly signed, notarized, turned in, it would have been accepted by. It still would have been rejected due to the incom incomplete information in the packet. Correct. If it was signed, and if it was missing any items uh, that are required for the application to be considered complete, it would have been rejected. And Mr. Wilson, at that point, would have been put on the alternative list. So the, the, um, the president of what Mr. Arnold is saying is he was misled by the person that was going to uh, receive the documents and was told that everything was complete. But that, that person would not have the authority to say that. They're going to be Co correct. And I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if he was saying that he was misled I, I mean, from my understanding, he's saying that the he had to get something notarized, uh, and the clerk wasn't here to notarize it. Uh, so, again, either way, here's here's where it stands, and here's the guardian position. The guardian position is, as Mr. Arnold had every opportunity, just as every other of the twenty four other applicants, uh, to submit their information on top for over a year. Correct. Uh, and his information came in for whatever reason. Uh, the reason, you know, interactions between him and the city clerk or whoever he was dealing with at that point in time, I can't call with a present there. So I can't comment on that. But I can say his guardian didn't get the information on time. Sure. And thus, Mr. Arnold was put on the alternative list. Uh, Can he be on the alternative list? If it's if his application is still not considered complete according to you guys? He can, because if in certain circumstance we are unable with the rank list to complete the pledged 11 units that we've agreed to complete uh, in our agreement with the state, then we would have to go to that alternative list and, you know, move a person up as they come out. Sure. I have a question. You said you came here today to remove him from the alternate list to what list? Well, I came here just to give you the case. Uh -huh. I think Mr. Wilson came here to request uh -huh. that he be moved from the alternative list to the primary right list, which means That's what I, came for. I just came to present to you, you know, the case as outlined uh, that was provided to you here. Uh, again, you can see the dates. You have the same outline that I was reading from here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the date that everything happened uh, in that particular order. But to summarize, basically, it, regardless of the, the application, it's still not still not complete. It's still, still not complete. And you did make your you and your firm did make him aware of the things that needed to be provided that had not been provided. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And you can find that in the letters that were in your packet. Okay. It would outline the things that were. I also looked at the package and. I see that there was one certified letter sent out, mm -hmm. and the rest of them was pretty much sent to his address. Correct. Who's to say that he received it? That's what I'm looking at. Other than the certified letter. Other uh, than the certified letter. Other than the certified letter, that is correct. Whether he received them or not, uh -huh. uh, I can't vouch for. But you can't vouch for it. But the law presumes uh -huh. if you yeah. put it into the mail, that uh -huh. it's received. That's a presumption. We went to court. That's what the, the judge would say. And not only that, the back and forth after those letters, uh, you know, Mr. Wilson was in contact with our office a number of times uh -huh. after each one of those uncertified letters were sent. And my next question is, how many appeals did he get? Just he one. Gets one. Just one appeal. He gets one. The next appeal has to go to the state. Okay. So 
So at this level, he just he moves to the state level. He moves to the state level, and then from the state level, move to the hood level. I mean, I think the, the moral of the story here is it went on for over a year, almost a year and a half. So, you know, get your paperwork done on time. You know, if you, if you had it turned in a week before, you'd have had ample opportunity to realize that it wasn't turned in correctly and that you could get all the documents that you need. So, you know, don't wait till the last minute. I think it's the moral here. Yeah. I, and uh, Mary Anderson? Yes. Yeah, I think the moral of the story, we was in a uh, pandemic. There was a lot of things going on that year that you. I get it, but all the, all the, all the other, about all the other applicants were in the same boat. Well, I'm not saying my applicant, and for, for the record, and for whatever purpose, sir, my application was complete when I turned it in. Based on the information at that particular time, the, the city clerk gave me. So if there was something that was missing, this is, I, I'm going to repeat that. The first time I heard that is tonight. The, the very the last, first time, sir. The last letter that you received that was certified was just three separate items that you had to turn in on that final. Yeah, on that 1029. only one form that you had to notarize, but this list three. Okay. If, if, I'm, if you're looking at the letter, that the documents that I turned in on the 29th mm -hmm. was on that certified letter. Mm -hmm. When I turned my application in, those documents were there. Initially, like a year ago or on the no, 29th? No, I'm, I'm telling you the 29th of last year, October, is the date of question. I turned those documents in, and I, Mr. Anderson, if the world was blue all the time, I was perfect. But if you, if you take my record, I do a lot of things in the community. Not, no excuse. But this time, last time, we were building these houses. With Guardian, when we brought the first African American contractor here, TMJ Construction, we built two of these houses. And I went through the same process then because at that particular time, they were giving Stewart Construction, who already had a house, three additional houses. I remember. That. And I was here then. And if you guys want a pencil, because technically, if there was something missing, if I could go on the alternate list and then be the top of the alternate list, thank you, Miss. Uh, Taylor, um, if I go on the top of the alternate list because my document was notarized on the 6th of November versus the day that I brought it in, the day that the clerk told me she would have somebody notarize it for me, and they took all my photo, out, everything that you can legitimately do to turn the application in, I did. It's a that was stamp. And if that's what you guys are going to hold me for, not the missing information. Not the fact that I turned it on the last day, but I turned it in. Thank you. So I have a question. Or I'm sorry. Wilson. Wilson. So if they sent you this letter again, certified, and you saw all three of these things that they needed, couldn't you have just turned it into them again? I'm telling you. I, I know I, you're I know, I'm sorry. I'm already. okay. To answer your question. I turned those three items in. Right, but if they said they didn't have it for whatever reason it got lost, couldn't you just turn it in again? It's, I would love to turn it in again. I would love to do whatever it takes to take my grandparents' house with my brother right there, God bless his soul, and Anthony Connor, chief, helped me restore. This house was built in 1944. I'm not asking anybody to give me anything. I already reinvested in what I have, and God bless me to have the deed and the taxes caught up. That was all delivered when I came home six years ago. So I'm not asking for a handout. I'm asking you to take something that was very valuable to the Wilson heritage, the Moore's heritage, the Mike Ray heritage, a lot of the different families who lived in that particular house, 16 head of kids. I don't know how my dad and mother, I mean, my dad and my aunties even lived in this little house or the outhouse. They had to go over to Deacon Ben Hicks to cook their food. And my grandfather been the first deacon at the Apostolic Church of Jesus. This is history here. Not, it's not something that okay. I'm throwing away. It's something that I rebuilt with the help of the community. Thank you. Understood. Here's, here's what I will say in closing. Uh, Guardian has done a lot of intake. We've done intake uh, for applicant verification for the city before. 
in a past iteration of the grant. Uh, I am not saying that my office staff is beyond a mistake, uh, but mistakes very rarely occur uh, because we take this serious. Uh, we want to make sure that anyone who can be helped has the opportunity to be helped. Not guaranteed to be helped, but has the opportunity to be helped. Uh, in this case, my office staff, I spoke with them just before I left here, uh, are pretty steadfast that they have reviewed Mr. Wilson's application at least on four occasions. That's formally on four occasions. Informally, they have a look at it every time he calls my office because I make it. Uh, so in short, I will say this, uh, and it's not to doubt Mr. Wilson's experience, uh, but I am confident that Guardian reached the correct outcome in review of the application. And if we pull that application, if I pulled it today, it would still be missing documents. Now, like I said, I can't account for what Mr. Wilson's conversation was with the staff who took his paperwork, but I know Guardian never received that paperwork. Uh, and given that city staff managed to get every other applicant's paperwork to us uh, without incident, uh, again, everybody's human, things happen, but probability that this would be missed is fairly low. Sure. Well, um, you know, there's going to be other people that are helped um, because of this. There's other people that were on the alternative list that are now bumped up to the main list. So it's not as if this money is somehow disappeared or this money is not going to go to a deserving family that needs it. This money is going to someone who fits the bill, who fits that program. So it's not going to be wasted in any way. So you do this. Uh, I believe we've done this every single year, or every two years. About every two years, COVID slows down to about a three-year cycle here. Uh, but about every two years. It's reasonable to think that we'll have another one in two years. I would agree. Okay. So obviously there's more opportunities in the future. There's obviously an opportunity that uh, someone that's on the main list could drop out for whatever reason, as two have already. Um, so two people that were on the alternative have gotten bumped up because of the previous two. Wait, for uh, so. clarification. For clarification. Uh, you, you have to speak into the microphone. Okay, yeah. Your staff said that my application was on the alternative list? Yes. Okay, so if somebody's on the alternative list, what happens if there's a document missing? And your staff informed me, where was I, Mr. Strader, on the alternative list? Do you have any idea where my name was ranked on the alternative list? You're the fourth person, fourth person on the alternative list. I'm the fourth person on the alternative list. Okay, well, yeah. there goes, there goes. Additional lies. I, 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 and it's going to be, I can't call it nothing but what it is. We only have the information that we have in our records. And I'm telling you, additional lies. Well, someone told me that I was the, 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 the very, because of the date issue, not missing documents. And, and I'm telling you, Mr. Uh, Guardian, yourself, yes. your staff never, out of all those calls, yes. you, you think for one second, Mr. Wilson, Mr. McGuire, I would be here today. Very clear. Be here today, knowing that there was some missing documents on on top of it, a signature, sir. I'm not that easy. Mr. Okay? Wilson, you Thank you. made your stance very clear. Thank appreciate you. It. I, it's, it's, appreciate it. Thanks. There anything further you need from the city? That is it. Uh, if there needs to be any other, uh, <laughs> my office based on today. We'll get back to Mr. Wilson via letter. We'll send that through the city manager's office uh, and let him know that uh, you know if he needs another appeal, we can take it to the state level at that point. And then mm -hmm. they will get the same documents that you all will get, uh, you all have, and we'll let them make that decision if it comes to that. Based on the documents that he was referring to being in the package, I'm, you do have that information. Uh, motion. Yeah, you, you do. I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize it was in your packets. I, I apologize for that. You'll make sure the next letter is certified. Every letter moving sure. forward will be certified. So as it stands right now today, uh, he's on the alternative list. Correct. Uh, so there's nothing that actually needs to be motioned. We need, we need to move or somebody needs to move to either approve or reject his, his uh, appeal. Okay. Is there a motion? I move to, eject, to reject the appeal. 
Is there a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Is there further questions? Seeing no one call roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McKeer? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? I got some of them. So. Uh, we can actually we can't Delay. once the motion started. You have to vote and then you can have a comment afterwards. Okay. Um no. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Ms. Taylor, go ahead. Um I guess what I'm trying to understand is that I get it. This is a this is his appeal at this level, and then he goes to the next level. Our job here as city council is to help clean up this this city because it's raggedy and it's falling apart okay so if we can help mr wilson by saying okay mr wilson you've had every opportunity as everybody else not that we're going to make you some special case but you had every opportunity like everyone else so why don't we give him a date well it's been voted gave him a date Give him um, a list of all the things that he needs to submit. And once that, it could be 10 days, it could be 20 days, but to let him see that, you know, we're on your side. We want you to help. We want you to get this grant. We want you to help clean up this city because once again, this city is falling apart. And so I can't understand why we couldn't just Give him a date, whether it's 10 days. If it's just bank statement and pay stuff, and if he can't come up with it within five to 10 days, okay, you you out of here. Ain't nothing we can do for it. We, we, done, we done done everything we can. But is it, aren't, aren't we about trying to clean up the city? I yes, ma'am, I agree. And I do think in those letters that were sent, it did give him a deadline that we need to get I get, get that, I get that, but he's at the appeal part now, and we get to make a decision whether you know, we rejected or not. But I think the important thing to remember here is that uh, you say that Avon Park needs to be cleaned up. Well, his house, is it any better than the person's house who's now is going to be in that spot? Is he more important than the person that is now? No, I'm not house saying that he's more important than anybody. Well, if you approve that to move it up, that's exactly what you would be saying because you would be taking them off the list and putting him in their place. No. No. That is absolutely true. I feel 100%. like if, if he had, he said he had extensive experience with this three years ago, helping other people. So I feel like he kind of had the benefit of the doubt, so to speak. He knew what was what was required to complete the process absolutely. more than just another Tom, Joe, or whoever off the street. He had experience with it, so I feel like he knew the importance of when he gets a letter saying, "Do this by this deadline, or else." He knew what the or else meant. So well, we're, 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 done okay. we're, we're done with comments. We're done with comments. I never got those letters. I only got the ones. We're, we're done letters. with comments. Mr. Okay, so make sure you understand. We're done with comments, Mr. Wilson. All right. You're going to give me some mail. Mayor, for the record, I object to the comment that the city is falling apart all over. For the record. That's something that sounds Well, here's what I will say in closing. I will help Mr. Wilson as best I can with his appeal to the state. But I can only handle the facts that we have. Sure. Uh, Appreciate. You know, I want to make sure that again, everybody who can be assisted is eligible to be assisted, has the opportunity to be assisted. Absolutely. Uh, I don't want Mr. Wilson to take me standing up here as an adversary. I'm not. Uh, my job is to present you with the facts of you know this is the case. This is the information that you know was provided, and this is the information that you missed. Uh, at the next level, I will go back and I will have an audit with my team. Uh, I will make sure what is provided is cleaner and clearer because whatever happens at the state, I have to come back and report to you here at the city. Uh, so again, I will do everything I can to make sure Mr. Wilson understands the process. I'm gonna be honest with Mr. Wilson and everyone here. It is unlikely that his position is going to change. Whether we go to the state level or to HUD level, the documents and the dates are what the documents and the dates are. Uh, but, you know, I will walk him through each one of those steps. And if something changes, I'll be the first one to let the city know and Mr. Wilson know. Uh, but again, I, I want to be clear because I don't want to seem like I'm making a promise. My inclination is that nothing will change. Uh, and furthermore, there's 11 families that are getting home rehab. Correct. 
There's, there's 11 families out there that were in desperate need of having their homes rehab, and they're getting that. Correct. It's been a great program. It's guarded, uh, Guardians overseen this program, what, close to a dozen times, I would say, in, in Avon Park alone? Quite a bit. And you do this all over the state. Um, so you guys have been a great organization for the city to work with. We'll have another one of these grant programs coming up probably in a year or two. Um, so there'll be more another opportunity for more families to be helped. And just so Mr. Wilson knows and everybody who's on that alternative list, they will be the first people to get a letter because if they're unassisted, they'll be the first per people to get a letter from Guardian or if Guardian is not here, hopefully another consultant will be the first people, you know, to send out a letter to these folks saying, hey, you didn't get assist assisted last time. Here's a letter, show up to the orientation so we can walk you through the process. Very good. Furthermore, if he gets moved up from that list, uh, he'll still have to provide those documents. Co correct. He'll still have to provide those documents. Are you providing another, another deadline to do that? or Co Correct. Well, what will happen is because there are three others ahead of Mr. Wilson, they will get the first opportunity uh, because their stamps, their date stamp times of when their application was considered uh, at this point for the alternative list uh, is at an earlier date than Mr. Wilson. Thank you. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. I like you for the city of Avon. I appreciate your help. Thank you for allowing us here. I appreciate it. Item number nine, we have resolution number 2021-17 to be approval of interest rate for capacity fee payment plan. Uh, I put this together at the, uh, we, the staff members yeah. came. Uh, uh, Mayor, can I jump in quick? Yeah. We, we forgot to send it. I was in a hurry. <laughs> Item number eight, we have the minutes from November the 8th to be the city council regular meeting. Is there a motion? I motion we approve by number C8. We have a motion and a second. Is there any questions on those minutes? Then we'll call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McKeer? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Item number nine, resolution 2021-17. So uh, this is, uh, as directed, uh, the interest rate on the loans that are the, the mortgage and, and notes that, that uh, are associated with capacity fee plan, uh, payment plan. Um, staff found that uh, local bank, South State Bank, the uh, prime interest is 3.25. Um, with 5.25 is a common um, uh, preferred, favored uh, interest rate. Um, the only thing I would say is I have changed this because we were looking at commercial as a possibility, which we're going to discuss later on. Mm -hmm. That I had changed this, but I, I don't made it. Perhaps I didn't send the, uh, the modification. But um, if you look at this, where it says um, in the second line, uh, it says a civil under section one, it says the city council approves the prime rate of South Bay, South State Bank in uh, Avon Park is three point two five percent and sets the interest rate. And I. Um, uh, it has for all cap capacity fee. I changed that for all residential capacity fee payment plan, uh, plans. For the so that one change, if you include that in your motion, uh, in case you have a different interest rate for commercial, uh, maybe prime plus three or something like that. You know, um, I, I just wanted to clarify that this was, and this is just my proposal. I mean, sure. Do what you wish. You know, um, it's prime plus two at this point. So the, the two debatable facts would be the interest rate and the uh, term length, is that right? Yes. Everything else is uh, just legalese and pretty much set in stone. Well, we don't set a, per, a, a payment term here, but that's something to consider too. Okay. So this is a program that we've had in place uh, for a while and uh, it has lapsed. And so we're having to basically redo it. What it does is there is a, typically an impact fee or a connection charge whenever you build a home or have a new business that comes into town, or if you change the use of a business substantially. Um, those fees can sometimes be very, very high, uh, particularly in the business world. And it's been seen um, as kind of a godsend to some people to be able to amortize that over 10, 20 years um, to not have to come up with so much cash up front. So I think it's a very good program. Like uh, Mr. Beer said, we're just here to set the rates. Uh, he has it proposed at five and a quarter percent, which is two above prime for residential currently. Is that a rate that people agree with or should it be higher or lower? I agree. We have one agreeing. It's, you said it's the prime plus three. 
Prime plus two is what's currently proposed for residential. It's 5.25%. Give me an example. If you have excellent credit uh, getting a home loan right now, you're still probably going to be somewhere around three, maybe three and a quarter. So it's pretty good. If you have terrible interest, then it could be, you know, seven or eight. You have terrible uh, credit, excuse me. Yeah. I just point out that the prime plus two for residentials, you have some modicum of security and then mortgage on the home. Obviously, it's not, it's behind mortgage companies and like you know, a second mortgage or something like that. You know, so we don't know at this point how good that that is, but nevertheless, it's more than what you'd have a commercial, which they generally are renting part of the space. And so if you end up doing that, obviously it's a higher interest rate would make more sense because there's more risk for you. And uh, to be clear, this is something that perhaps we would set every year yes. to go along with prime. Yeah. Is there a date set as to when we would do this or would it just be on the uh, annual? I, it's up to you when you want to do that, but I, I would just, <clears throat> I would, unless we hear as to what date they set their you know, prime, their prime rate, we could change their prime rate at the bank. They may change it quarterly. I don't know, but I mean, if not, then I would say it's the end of the year. Okay. I, I think the ordinance says annually that they have, and also I think the amount, the two hundred and forty payments. I think that's in the agreement that the outside council did. Two hundred and forty payments this year, twenty years. And for perhaps for residential, that's that's okay. I think I suggest that you do something different, which I think I did suggest that you do something different for commercial. Okay. So is there an accompanying resolution for commercial then? Oh, no, I, I haven't done one for them yet. We can do one for the next meeting because we still take two meetings to read that ordinance or to make that go into effect. But I'll read this resolution. It's a resolution of the city of Bitcoin Park Board of uh, provide council approval of interest rate passing from the payment plan. Mortgage notes provide for conflict stability and effective bank. Okay. So it's currently at prime plus two, which is five and a quarter percent. Currently, it will be renewed every year, and it's currently set at 240 months, which is 20 years. You need to add residents on that resolution. Yeah, so whatever motion um, you give, please add res uh, residential where I, I noted it earlier. Okay. okay. Any more discussion? I want to make a motion. I make a motion to approve resolution number 2021-17 for resident time. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. There's no further discussion. We'll call the roll. Councilmember Baguire? Yes. Councilmember McCure? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Gary, would it be possible to go ahead and have the discussion and basically tell you what we want in the resolution? Of, basically, have the resolution just change the number and do it have the first reading tonight? For, for, for commercial? For commercial. Or does it have to be completely different language? Well, no, I mean, I think it, it, it could be the same, except for commercial instead of residential. But it's not going to go into effect until your next meeting anyway, even if you read it tonight, because it's. Um, uh, it's an ordinance that has to be read twice. That That's what I'm saying. It could, could the, the first reading be tonight? Is what I'm saying. Of this ordinance? Of this ordinance and for a commercial version. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It could be added to the same ordinance, the same number, resolution. Uh, no, no uh, you'd have to have a new resolution, number, but you would have to have commercial. Okay. Um, do, do you have a resolution number for us that we can add on? The last one you sent me was 22. So it would be 2021. No, actually, we don't have anything in writing. I think we'd have to be able to produce a written uh, after you pass it. So, no, I think it's better. It's okay. Than have uh, also, it's if good. I can add in your packet attached is um, ordinance um, 6 2021. That's the one to authorize being able to do this. And on the second page, top says all payment plans shall carry an interest rate approved each year by resolution by council. And then number five says no payment plan shall exceed a period of 240 months. Yeah. So it could be less. Sure. Yeah, well, that's right. The, the, the ordinance is in here. All right, so okay. what are you doing now? We're good for now then. We'll bring that up at our next meeting. So we can get the commercial program underway. 
All right, next we item number 10 is the resolution 2021 18. This is a resolution of the city of Avon Park, the Highlands County Board adopting the revised budget for fiscal year 2020 to 2021, providing for an effective date. Melody? Yes, sir. Um, what you guys have before you this evening is the revised budget for fiscal year 2021. Um, we have to revise the budget by November 30th of each year. Um, attachment A is actually, um, I mean, Exhibit A is what you'll be approving. So the total but revised budget is $39,412,630. And that is an addition, an addition of 306,000, which includes 140,000 for police pension contributions, 140,000 for contractual services at the airport, um, for the airport lease, which will be 50% will be reimbursed by FAM and an additional 26,000 at the airport for improvements to the taxiway and apron rehab, but those will be um, offset by grants. Okay. Okay. And all of that is 39 million? Yes, sir. All right, do we have to uh, give that $39 million uh, sum in our motion? Yes, please. Okay. All right. So the motion would be to approve the budget changes for fiscal year 2021 in the amount of $39,412,630. Is there a so moved? Well moved. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any questions for staff? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McCure? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item number 11. This will be resolution 2021 19. Resolution of City of Avon Park, Florida, providing for approval of permit application and additional general conditions critical to all permits issued to use the city rights of way. And property providing for approval of fees associated with applications and permits for the use of rights away to buy for an effective date. Okay. Jerry, do you want to give us a little synopsis? Yes, I've been trying to clean some of the uh, issues up with the staff. You know, we we um, uh, they raised some issues we have concerning uh, staff doing a lot of work for uh, outside people. You know, uh, to um, it's not being compensated, and so this is trying to uh, put that into effect. But also, the, the, uh, there's issues with the right of way permit um, mm -hmm. uh, that need to be cleaned up uh, regarding you know, some legal aspects and, and uh, so on. And we did that as part of the reviewing of the get a permit. Council, have any questions for uh, Jerry? Anything specific about this? Is there a motion? Make a motion to go ahead and approve resolution 2021 19, please. Do we have a second? We have a motion on a second. We'll call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McCure? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Public hearing. This will be a second reading for Ordinance 18 2021. The board is amending the future land use plans for the city of Avon Park, Florida. How many 25 parcels of land totaling nine acres located on West Lake Bird Boulevard and Lake Bird Boulevard from future land use of county medium density residential to city low density residential? Transmitting said amendment to the board department that got opportunity for notification purposes only to provide for survey, provide for conflict, and provide for effective date. All right, tell us what we have here. Good evening, my name is Dana Riddell. I'm with the Central Florida Regional Planning Council. I haven't gotten to meet all of the new council members yet, so it's nice to meet you. You may remember Jeff Schmucker. He's come and presented on this item before, and we act simply as an extension of the planning services. Um, Randy does a lot of the day-to-day -day work, and then we, we do the backup work behind him. 
So just to actually start going into this case, uh, this is 25 parcels. Thank you, Chris. There's 25 parcels just to the west of US 27, just north of Lake Bird. They were annexed several years ago, but the zoning wasn't actually ever changed. You can go to the next slide, please. So the existing future land use is medium density residential. But we have to keep in mind that the future land use in the county is much different than the city. Mm -hmm. So their medium density residential only allows up to eight dwelling units per acre. When you hear me talk about medium density residential in the city, it's totally different because it allows up to 16 dwelling units per acre. So in this case, because we're respecting the existing future land use designation that allows approximately eight dwelling units per acre, we are changing, or we're proposing a, I'm sorry, can you go to the next one? These are out of order. <laughs> yeah, you got it, yeah. We, we're proposing a future, or the city is proposing a future land use change to low density residential. In the city, we have two options, low density residential for up to six dwelling units per acre or medium density residential, which allows up to 16 dwelling units per acre. So that's why we said out of the two, the low density residential is a better fit for this particular subdivision. We're just respecting what's already there. Mm -hmm. Can you go back? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Back to the existing zoning. Okay. So it is zoned R1 right now with the county. And again, we want it to be consistent. The R1 designation in the county doesn't specifically say that eight dwelling units per acre are allowed in the county. They just go based off their future land use. But in the city, <laughs> there we go. Oh, no, or two, I think. And one more. There we go. Okay. <sighs> I'm sorry. I didn't, I promise I didn't make this PowerPoint. It wasn't me. <laughs> but I appreciate the help. So, yeah, the proposed future land use is low density residential. We've discussed allows six dwelling units per acre. The proposed zoning is R1A in the city of Avon Park. Go forward one more. There we go. And that allows four dwelling units per acre. Go for it again. So there is a little bit of a lesser density. Say somebody wanted to come in, clear out the existing lots and start a new subdivision, they would only be able to do less lots or bigger lots. That came up at the planning and zoning hearing. The surrounding neighborhood wanted to make sure that they couldn't just start building tons of little homes or um, little parcels on their plate with their big, beautiful lots. So um, no, they can't make it more intense. They can only make it less intense. Moving on. The Planning and Zoning Board voted to recommend approval and the City Council also voted for approval on first reading. I'm now available for any questions for second reading. Any questions for Dan? Okay, this is a public hearing. So a public hearing for ordinance 18-2021 is now open. Anyone from the public wishing to speak on this issue can now do so. Take note takers as usual. Public hearing for ordinance 18-2021 is now closed. Do we have a motion? I have a motion that we approve ordinance number 18-2021. We have a motion. Is there a second? A second. We have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McCure? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. Item number 13. This would be a first reading of ordinance 23 2021. The ordinance of the city of Avon Park Forward provides recitals as to the council intent amending the city code. Section 98 5 by amending residential payment plans to provide for disconnection of service for non payment and adding payment plan regulations for commercial correctness connections. Provide the application and repeal of conflicting codes, ordinances, and resolutions providing for severability from an effective date. This is the, uh, the other shoe dropping from what we talked about before. This is the commercial uh, payment plans for uh, capacity fees, and we do have. Uh, a requester already here, which is the impetus for this. So I, I, uh, I got I had con have been contacted by um, council members that wanted this, and so uh, I want to. I don't mean to interrupt you real quick, Terry, but I think we skipped 
or does 19 dash 2021 what we did with 18. that's very true yeah that's it that's the accompanying ordinance yeah we'll read the ordinance 19 dash 2021 so anytime that we uh, change a zoning, we always have the future land use that goes along with it. Yeah. Good catch, sir. All right. 19-2021 of the ordinance meeting, the first official zoning map of the city of Avon Park 4 and then the 25 parcels of land totaling 9.8 acres located at West Lake Bird Boulevard and Lake Bird Boulevard from the zoning of county written. R1 residential district to city R1A low zone residential provider assembly provider contract and provider effective date. I'm assuming this would also be a second reading in a public hearing, right? Yes. Yeah. So the public hearing and second reading for ordinance number 19 2021 is now open and we should speak on that issue. You can now do so. Seeing none, the public hearing is now closed. As I said before, this is in conjunction with the previous ordinance that we just approved. Anyone wish to make a motion? Make a motion to approve ordinance 19 2021, please. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. There's no further questions. We'll call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McCure? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Very good. Now we'll come back to the ordinance 23 2021. Uh, I'm going to It's an ordinance of the City of Avon Park Board providing recitals uh, as to the council intent amending the city code, section 98 5, by amending residential payment plans to provide for disconnection of service for non payment and adding payment plan regulations for commercial connection to provide for complication and appeal of conflicting codes, ordinances, and resolutions, provide for assembly, and provide for an effective date. As I mentioned, this is for the commercial payment plans. Um, there, one additional thing that I added, um, besides the fact that I, I separated 98-5 to residential and commercial now, as we look down at uh, page two of four, item B, um, collection foreclosure. Um, I just added provision in there because of where foreclosure is not practicable, you know, it's not effective, it's going to take uh, too much uh, cost. Uh, we can still disconnect service because the service has not been paid for and the capacity has not been reserved. Therefore, we're not required to serve them. So um, um, we'll, you would have the option of giving them 30 days notice to either pay it or be disconnected. So um, sometimes that's more effective than foreclosure. Okay. All right. So basically the um points of contention here are probably going to come down to the breakdown of what is eligible for a payment plan what's not and the term is that correct yeah that's right um so under the commercial payment plans this is far more complex than the residential one which is uh, fairly clean uh, and this is these are just simply my impressions of what you might want okay, okay? uh subject to your change um, basically, uh, we're saying that um, the city council shall establish a minimum down payment for the applicant of at least 30% of the capacity fee total. That gives them a little bit of um, uh, skin, in the, skin game. In the game. Thank you. And uh, so, second item is the applicant must either be a 501c3 nonprofit organization or the applicant and related parent or companies must qualify for it as a small business as per 13 CFR 121.105, which is pretty broad. Um, so it's a small business administration uh, qualification for small, for be, to be a small business. And um, uh, we not want- or, hmm? Does it go by size or value? Yeah. The, the definition like, of small like, business no. is enormous. Yeah, it's, it's bigger than anything in Highlands County, but probably. Okay, yeah. yeah. Thank but you. It's not, so if you get a, a Carabas, let's say, that's, yeah. they're not gonna qualify for, for this because they make way more than- I will take ones, no. Oh, of course, but they should be able to afford to pay the capacity fee too, which won't be small. All payment plans shall carry a, a rate of interest approved each year by resolution of the city council. The payment period shall not exceed 10 years and the term of payment shall be shall be set by the city council at its, at its sole discretion, but we, we set considering the following guidelines based on total capacity fee. So if the capacity fee is zero to 20,000, no payment plan. Um, 
$20,001 to $50,000 five year term, and then greater than $50,000 10 year term. Um, applicants own, owning the, the property for which the capacity is sought must either annex into the city if annexation is legal if, um, and practicable, or must sign an annexation agreement which uh, for new members is basically an agreement that says that when uh, uh, annexation is lawful, you'll do it and you won't oppose it. Otherwise, you pay attorney's fees um, and, and lose. If the payment plan uh, is in arrears in excess of 60 days, or if the payment plan is late in excess of five days or more, than, more than three times a year, in a year, the applicant agrees that the payment plan will be terminated and the full amount remaining uh, paid within 30 days or, or the water and wastewater service will be disconnected. This is because there's not a, a home or something like that to uh, uh, to have and generally. I mean, for example, I use Kravis even those out parcels. I don't believe they even own those. You know, they're, they're on somebody else's property. So, you know, you really get a lot of stuff, basically equipment that you can have nothing, you know, that you can do with it really other than trying to sell it on the, the market, you know, which you won't get very much money for it. So we need some security, which is disconnection. You know, nobody's going to do business if they're disconnected from water sewer. So that's the first assist. And um, that's the first part. Of course, the, first, the second part is they're not paying the bills. The same thing really applies to they're not compliance with your, your rules and regulations. So they, they shouldn't, this that should determine this plan should be terminated. Now, those are my proposals. Um, and uh, Going on to that, if the city bill pay, payment is in arrears 60 days, that's the second part I mentioned. Um, and that says that the bills were in arrears, that you can also disconnect them. Um, payment plan shall be established by written agreement, including among other things, a provision for payments to be secured by a recorded lien uh, for real property owned by the applicant within the county and on business personal property if practicable. Plans shall also include a review of at least two credit agency reports found to be acceptable to the city manager with the cost of such reports being paid by the applicant. Number nine, the city council should either approve each agreement or approve future form of agreement by resolution. Each such agreement proposed by staff shall require city council approval and subsequent signature by the mayor. Staff shall not provide financial information in the agenda packet, but shall provide staff recommendation for or against the agreement. Okay. That's just my impression of what I thought would be based on my work in utilities for many years, what I'd want to see as a utility. Okay. Well, I don't think anyone's going to argue about the 501c3 or the small business designation as it covers just about everything that could perceivably come and ask for something like this. Um, do you see a need for putting a cap on it? I know it's probably highly unlikely that unless you're a large business that you would ever build something large enough to need a cap, but do you see that to be prudent, maybe like a you know, like 250 or 300,000 dollar cap or something like that? No, you could, you could do a cap. The reason why I say is, let's say that someone was going to uh, build a subdivision, um, you know, they may not necessarily be a large business. But they're building a subdivision that required you know, large infrastructure, and that, that could run up the bill at pretty high, right? Oh yeah. Well, if, but nobody nobody starts a subdivision without uh, having already um, considered what the cost of putting the infrastructure in is, and receiving a bank loan for that. And, and I would say that they, I mean, I've never seen that um, anybody complain doing a residential subdivision. About capacity fees at all, simply because it's all in the it's all in the low. I see. Okay. And where it usually comes up is uh, you know, in the circumstances you know we've seen is you know somebody uh, redoing a, an existing uh, rental space with, with an upgraded amount, like it may be a Walmart card store at first, but then they make it into a restaurant, which you know the capacity fee go from one ERC to probably twenty or thirty. Expense is very high. Or you know a space that's just you know um, uh, an office being then turned into a laundromat. These laundromats these huge amounts of capacity um, space. Sure. So okay. those are the kind of things to anticipate here. I, I would anticipate you have it with a subdivision. They're not going to start it without having a loan in place. Okay. Cover these. Uh, as far as having the breakdown between zero to 20, 20 to fifty, and greater than fifty. 
Um, do you see an absolute need for having that? I, mean, I think that uh, potentially having it kind of fly across the spectrum might be a little better. Yeah. Well, okay. yeah, there's one question I had too on that. I, I, I like the overall concept, but if you got 20000 or less, you, you got to pay $20,000. If you got 50000 or, or more than 20000 30% would be 15000 so it's kind of like if you went over the twenty thousand dollar mark, you know, you don't pay less than somebody got twenty thousand. So that's why I was thinking maybe uh, a flat percentage or something all the way across. Is that what you were I was about? more talking about the no payment plan uh, for zero to twenty, a five year term for twenty to fifty, and a ten year term above fifty. Basically, just making all of them ten year terms. Is that was the But my issue with that is if you don't have twenty thousand dollars, you know, you probably should be considering going into business. And, you know, because I mean, I, I've opened a couple of businesses. And well, for example, uh, probably the most common would be like a uh, hair salon. Yeah. So you have a, a single lady that does a hair salon. She has two chairs. It automatically triggers quite a few ERCs for a hair salon. But yet, realistically, she probably doesn't earn a whole lot of money and definitely doesn't have a lot of cash in her. You know, it's kind of what I'm getting Going from a space that, for example, used to be pure grit. They were a retail store, almost no ERCs, and then you go into a hair salon, which is a higher ERC kind of thing. Right. I, well, I think that's probably your, uh, your your purview, what you want to do with that. Uh, uh, you know, like I said, I just threw in here what I thought was going to be a, um, based on my ex utility experience, what I would want to see as a utility owner. I understand. Well, what, what does the board feel about uh, making them all a, a flat 10 year term through the spectrum from zero to the, the high end? Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I was thinking more of the no payment plan, maybe like two to three years. Of capping it at two or three years versus 10 years? No, the first one is say no payment plan. And, and the second one has a five year, and the third one, and the third one has a ten. I was saying instead of you no know, payment plan, make it anywhere from one to three. Give them well, a chance. I'll put it to you this way: if you were opening a business, and I told you I'm the city, and I said you have to pay me twenty five thousand dollars, would you want to pay that over two or three years or ten years? Of course, I would want to pay it off. If I could, if you but could, if but you couldn't. The money, I gotta, but you had to you buy gotta, furniture, you, you had to buy with. equipment, you had to buy appliances. Well, you just got through talking about the hairdresser and how she don't have a whole lot of money. How right. she? Gonna, I mean, why would you she, give her 10 years she ain't gonna be able to. She ain't gonna be able to pay it off up front. They pay and, 30. and she definitely ain't gonna want to pay it in ten years. Who won't want to want to pay it in ten years? Well, you're paying every month sooner, a little bit every month. No, I'm just saying the interest rate. Okay. We're going to pay it off in 10 when they can pay it off. Well, if she can pay it off in two to three, I don't think there's an early penalty yeah. payoff. No, there's no, no early penalty. Mm -hmm. Up to 10 years. Okay. So uh, the other issue is the 30% uh, down. Anybody agree, disagree with 30%? You're on all of them. And then the same thing with 10 years, I think I'd go with that. Anyone disagree with 30%? We've got two in favor. Everybody seems good. Uh, good on the term of 10 years. Up to 10 years, that paid off early, if so desired. I think that's why they can have a story. Oh, so you give them. Sure, they can pay, pay off early. And okay. Same I'll interest. Go yep. And they can go full 10 and years. This, and this. Sometimes you open up a small business, you don't know, you might not see any actually profit to maybe after three to five years because of all expenses you put in. So to give everybody the same possibility, I think that's a great idea, actually. Now, obviously, this is not actually setting the uh, percentage rate until we get the resolution at our next meeting. Right? Okay. All right. Did I hear that we have one of our applicants actually with us tonight? Someone that was interested in this program? Anyone? Okay. I guess not. All right. <clears throat> Is there anything else uh, on this that anyone would like to see change? Six and seven, I think it's just a duplicate. Page six and seven? The item from number six and seven. Oh, never mind. That's a still the same utility. 
All right, so at this point, we're only looking at taking everything to a 10 year term. Everything else stays the same. So there will be a motion to approve ordinance 23 2021, changing all of the terms to 10 years. Is there a motion to that effect? We're going to do the 30% separately. Are you going to take the Every, zero to 20,000? Plan. From zero to greater than 50, everything is 10 years. Okay. And then still the same 30% down, nobody changed everybody. Nobody said they wanted to change it. So it's 30% across the board. I think so. I think it's making all fair all everything. Years yep. Don't you want to have a, a, a cap on how much you're willing to do if they're passing the rates or you know, passing fees? $50,000 or $500,000, you got to cap it at 100 or something like that? Or you gonna let the small business aspect do it? Probably let the small business aspect cap it. Okay. If it pops up, then it will make the best change. All right. So, is there a motion to that effect? I shall move. Okay. So we have a motion to approve this ordinance, only changing the all of the payment plans to ten years. Is there a second? Motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further questions? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Council Member McGuire? Yes. Council Member McCure? Yes. Council Member Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 14, we have a revised clean water state revolving fund. Melanie? So this is a request to revise the Clean Water State Revolving Fund Wastewater Planning Loan document. Um, the original loan is for 250000 So this is a request to reduce it to 50000 to include um, just the wastewater treatment facility expansion plan. And I have Jameson on the line to explain the details to you. Okay. Jameson, are you with us? Uh, yes. Do you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so uh, pretty much with this plan, we're going to be looking at coming up with a plan for expanding the plant, the wastewater treatment plant, from 1.5 million gallons per day to 2 million gallons per day to handle you know, future growth. And then we're also looking at inspecting the current equipment and coming up with improvements to be made uh, for the next five years. So the city can plan accordingly for any you know improvements that are needed at the treatment plant. Okay. And we're also looking at a, a coming up with a plan on how to meet the new FEP um, effluent uh, quality standards uh, for total nitrogen and total phosphorus. They came up as part of the new permit renewal. They came up with some more stringent requirements. So this plan will help address that. Is it likely that we'll be able to uh, address those issues somewhat economically? Yes. I mean, as part of SRF funding, um, it is required to look at alternatives. So as part of this plan, we'll be looking at three, if at least three different alternatives of the improvements. And we'll run those by the city and, you know, decide on which alternative to move forward with. Okay. Rick is, uh, is not here to jump up and down on us, but he would tell you that this is a good thing and uh, that it will allow us to grow considerably just this extra half a million gallons per day. So we're all here. Zoom if you want to hear this. What's that? He's I'm here. I, I, I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Rick, yes, tell, sir. Us, so, tell us why we need to go from 1.5 to 2. Well, with the growth that we're going through right now, you know, we're getting close to peaking out, and especially with the nitrogen and the nitrates that, that that he's talking about is an upcoming event. So I, a lot of the equipment needs to be gone through and updated as well. So I believe it's all around a, a, a hands down a thing to go forward with. Good deal. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions for James? I do. I have one question is uh, under the uh, method of compensation. Why do we have in there uh, possible air travel fees? What is the reason behind that? Uh, that? That might be part of a typical uh, 
contact language, but there will be no air travel. I, I, I... Okay. Just want to make sure. Any other questions? I don't know if we clarified for the record, but that's Jameson with the Kinley Horn. That's our city contracted engineer for our water and wastewater needs. Any other questions? And this is a loan. It's 50%. We pay off over 20 years, so it's only 25,000. Originally, we were going to be requesting 250, but now we're only having requests 50. Correct. This started back way before I got here. It was for the North End Extension planning. And by the time we got it, everything was pretty much done. So they allowed us to use it, but we don't need 250 at this point. Very good. Great. Is there any uh, inclusion of uh, planning for the extension of mains, like a uh, master plan of water and sewer mains and lift stations and so on? In this? Yeah. Jameson? Uh, this is uh, solely looking at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, extending utilities, I mean, could be part of a complete wastewater master plan if that's what the city would like to do. That could get added. Well, I, I, I would go ahead and let, let you guys do, do this motion, then I want to uh, do my pitch for that. Sure. All right. Do we have a motion to approve the 50,000 auto loan from the state revolving fund? Yeah. Make a motion to approve line number D14. We have a second. We have a motion and a second. We'll call a roll. Council Member McGuire? Yes. Council Member McGuire? Yes. Council Member Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so we've already run into an issue with regard to lift stations planning. We have a, a south end and a north end now. We know we're where we can grow. I think it, it makes more, more a lot of sense to have a master plan, which uh, you know, I, I always recommend for utilities because it's if you have a, a big subdivision going in there, you know what size pipe do you run there based on now if they're east or west, you know, that <laughs> that leave open you know, the possibilities, but nevertheless, uh, and, and I'm not I'm not saying uh, to do it today, but I, I really strongly recommend we do it. As, as to the priorities and the prioritization of this, I'll leave that to Mark and, and Rick, but you know, um, I, I, I think it's very important in which the lift station situation we have with New Corps really brought the light out of the hodgepodge you know, that's been done in the past. And that's because there was never any planning for it. And uh, there's not, I mean, wastewater is actually, believe it or not, is cheaper than uh, master planning than water because you have issues with regard to pressure and things like that for, for, for water. But you know, I really recommend that you plan on doing that, even if you do it in parts over a period of time, because um, um, otherwise you pay the price later on. Sure. I figured you're going to say the same thing. That's something, I, I agree. At, yeah, that's something we can look at the American Rescue Plan for, possibly, because it that. is greatly needed, uh, not only for what you say, but to expand water to, I'll use Avon Park Lakes, where everybody's calling in every day, want water. <laughs> You're gonna have that on radio, aren't you, Barry? Uh, but uh, we we had put in for the grant last year. We didn't get any of the three planning grants, but we're in, Rick and I are certainly in agreement um, that it is highly needed because there was some water lines run that Rick will say had no plans, and there's all different sizes out there. So I think that really be probably tops on. Um, some more funding to use from American Rescue Plan. So I, think I, I can't, I can't agree ahead. more with Mark. Um, we actually have some lines where we've wanted people to, uh, where people come to us and wanting water, and because the lines are ran too small, they're already overtaxed. So we're not even able to utilize the water that we have to add other customers because the line's too small, and we're getting customers calling, you know, pretty much on a daily basis. Actually. Usually, probably about three to four water availabilities a day we're doing of people wanting water. And because we don't have a master plan, it's really hard to, uh, you know, run water without it. And it's kind of disappointing to be able to tell people that you can't supply them with water when uh, if we had a master plan, we could start that. Exactly why I was recommending it. And I'm glad you guys are always doing it. So I can't agree more with Mark and uh, Jerry. 
Brenda. Brenda Gray, 410 East Lake View Drive in Rock Park, Florida. I would yes, just like for the council to consider before you spend all the money of the American West Rescue Plan funds on the south ends of town. There is some sewer lines that really, really need to be repaired. I'm sure it's all over Avon Park, but I do know in the um, um, south end of town, there is that they, they, they have not been done since 50, 60 years ago when they put that that black stuff over the pipes. Okay. And yeah, and Brenda, that's that that's what these plants do. They basically don't just simply say we need to put a big pipe here and a small pipe there. Yeah. They evaluate areas that you know are weak and need to be bolstered or replaced and things like that. And so that's come, but you but you have to have a plan for it. Basically. I understand that, but I would like for that to be into the plan. Okay. Some type of uh, uh, plan to uh, repair the um, uh, <clears throat> south end of town sewer lines. Do you okay. think that could happen? Um, who am I speaking with? Rick. Rick. Is that what yeah, you're yes, yeah, yeah. Actually, I, actually, when you spoke to me the other day, and that I got with the mind. Rick, okay. Rick, do you want to? I, 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 yeah, I, I would like to get with you um, maybe after the holidays here, and and I would uh, like to talk to you where these areas are, and I would like to okay. start looking into that. But I do believe that is something that we would put on the master plan as well. Um, not just the south, just throughout the city. There's a lot of plumbing. I mean, we have fire hydrants from 1910 that are still intact that we're still currently using that we're looking at replacing as well. So okay. you know, it's a it's an old you know we've got a lot of old plumbing in the ground right now. Well, we just need to start at putting it in the plan. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So last I heard, we were looking at uh, asking the American Rescue Plan administrators uh, if a master plan was possible. Have they gotten back to us? Um, we can use it through the, I can't remember if it's the clean water or the wastewater SRF. So anything that's included in any of those loan programs okay. is allowable under the American Rescue Plan funding. Awesome. So that would be included. So I thought that we had actually asked, um, and maybe it was just for this uh, upgrade from 1.5 to 2. I thought we had asked for a proposal uh, from Kimley Moore or from some engineering group to get us a proposal on what a plan would cost. So has that actually been put out yet? And if not, how do we go about doing that? No, is James, James are you still on? Uh, yes, I'm still on. Jameson, have we put a request forward to you for a master water and wastewater plan? Um, I, I have provided a cost uh, for a wastewater master plan um, in the past, but I know recently when we were talking about the headworks project it was brought up yeah for a facilities plan so that's mm -hmm. why this proposal was focused on that but we do yeah. have a cost on a, a wastewater master plan uh, that we, we when we helped out for the grant funding okay uh, request we put together some scope of work and fees for the water and wastewater master plans okay so do we have all that documentation still and is it still valid uh, it is still valid outside of the wastewater master plan. Uh, the facilities plan was actually a part of that wastewater master plan. So that okay. would remove a, a, a portion of the budget, let's say $50,000 of the budget. So sure. it's probably going to be closer. I mean, to I'm just, if I remember right, maybe it might end up around 75,000, 50 to 75,000 if you remove the facility plan. I mean, it really depends what the city would like to achieve out of the wastewater master plan. Okay. So uh, would it be possible for uh, Rick and the city manager to get together and, and put a request to Jameson on what exactly we need the city, what, what exactly we need to be in that plan? Sure. Okay. And uh, hopefully they can get it to us, you know, I mean, sooner the better. We're, I think everybody's ready to rock and roll on this master plan so that we can know exactly what we're going to be in for for future growth. So. And if I may, I believe that the um, American Rescue Plans are only for a wastewater master plan, but I'll verify that. Okay. But you can add a hand as long as we're talking about the American Rescue Plan. You just did a, a seminar, but we called and said. In a, I did a webinar. And, um, tell you? and basically they said that you know, we're right now we're using the guidelines from the interim final rule, um, but they are going to do a final final rule. Mm -hmm. So they suggest that we, you know, we have until 2024 to spend the funds. 
So spread it out because there may be things added to it that are not there now. I got you. Okay. Well, I mean, it goes without saying, let's start with the things that we know we can get and work our way down. Okay. Well, we're looking forward to that. Hopefully it'll be at our next meeting or one soon thereafter. Anything else on the wastewater planning? Seeing none. Moving on to item number 15. This will be approved minute number one to IPO number three between the City of Eagle Park and Kennedy Park. Okay, this is this is uh I have Jameson here to go over what this is about. If Jameson, if you could speak, please. Uh, yes, I know it was maybe a, a month ago. Uh, we were uh, proving the Headworks project, the replacement of the screen and grid mm -hmm. system at the front of the wastewater treatment plant, and this is the construction phase services portion for that, which includes, let's say we're, we're gonna attend meetings, we're gonna attend, you know, do site visits, uh, review shop drawings, uh, review any uh, RFIs that come from the contractor, any requests for information, any questions that come up during construction and review record drawings and submit certification to FDEP once the project is complete. And construction, for this project will take, I mean, it's gonna be a good a good amount of time, let's say six months when they get started. We have any questions for Kimley Horn about this? This all has to do with the head work that we approved a little over a month ago? That is yes. correct. So, now so we did the design. And now you're coming back a month later and you want an almost another $30,000. Why didn't you put that in the original uh, paperwork? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, it, it was back, I don't know, a year and a half or two, you know, a year and a half ago. And I can't remember at the time why it wasn't included. Um, but yeah, going back, I guess we, we should have included that at that time. Okay, any other questions? No, I'll get my next one. All right. Anyone wishing to make a motion? Don't all jump at once. Okay. Motion to approve amendment number one to IPO number three between the city of Avon Park and Kimlin Horn. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there questions? Everyone seems apprehensive, so why don't you ask some questions so we can get somewhere? I already asked my question. I'm just not happy with the idea that you come back a month later and ask for $30,000 more. I think we're paying you enough money to be able to be having all this stuff up front. I think you know that and you agree with me. So let's not do it again, please. And are you, are you referring to the construction budget when that came up? I believe it would be, yeah. It was like a million, yeah. a million dollars. Okay. I mean, we did actually provide this proposal, I mean, months ago to the city, um, but I know Rick Whalen was there at the time, but we did we did provide this a, a while ago. Okay. Do you think this is just a staff error or lack of staff? I would say yes. I would say no. It went, to, it went to Rick Whalen. However, it still would have been in addition to this sixty-three thousand. You know, whether it was months ago or now. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, there's some confusion in thinking that this is somehow a uh, like a, a cost overrun. It's not a cost overrun. It just simply wasn't included in the original. Correct. Okay. Right. Any other questions? Seeing none, we will call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McCure? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? No. Deputy Mayor Bernard? No. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. I'm number 16, speak. 
Activity waiver for minors, general liability release and indemnity agreements. Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> Waiting for this one. Yep. Uh, back in September, I'll give you the background on this, so you all know. They were having a homecoming parade. Saw the cones out, didn't realize it happened the next day. I had me walking by the um, administrative assistance desk and I saw some waiver forms, hold harmless for participation. And I said, what are those? And she said, the uh, high school cheerleading coach passed them or dropped them off so that the um, cheerleaders could ride the on the ladder truck. So I picked it up and I actually made a copy and read it off to you what it says. It says, um, hold harmless for participation. I am requesting that my child be able to participate in Avon Park High School homecoming parade, riding on the city of Avon Park's fire truck on September 30th, 2021, and on November 29th, 2021. For the Avon Park Christmas Parade, I further understand that this is a hold harmless agreement for the city of Avon Park. This hold harmless agreement means that I will not hold the city of Avon Park liable as a result of an injury during participation in this school function. I also understand that I will be required to abide by the rules and regulations applied to all Avon Park High School students. So I'm not a lawyer, didn't go to law school, but I knew that certainly was not sufficient. I've seen enough in my career that Wow, so I sent it to Jerry, um, he agreed with me. So uh, I got a hold of the uh, cheerleading coach just to let her know and let's just say she wasn't a fan of mine that day, probably still isn't because I used the word no. But you can say I emphatically agreed with you. Well, I was gonna say that Jerry, but um, <laughs> Anyhow, I said to Jerry, it looks like cheerleading coach, somebody came up with it on their own. When I got talking to her, she said they've been using this for years because a prior city manager some years ago told them they didn't have a waiver form, so come up with one. So yes, yeah, she went online, found this, that's what they've been using. So I told them absolutely not, that we're not going to ride on the um, fire truck. Jerry told me that uh, he would work on one. It was at least two pages long. The cheerleading coach said, didn't matter how long it was going to be because parents don't read it anyways, just sign it. That was a wow moment right there. But I'm just being transparent why this is in front of all you. And um, so Jerry prepared it. I figured it was going away. Um, the, the chief, not this, but riding on the, the fire truck ladder truck and um, anyways um, Chief Marcy called me a couple of days ago and said the cheerleading coach wants uh, these waivers because she wants to get them to the people. Jerry had put in his email we need to get it through our insurance company to see if they their law firm they use would opine but they wouldn't but they did and in your packet you have the emails from Jerry and from our insurance carrier. So I'm not going to make the decision as city manager because I would say no. That's my opinion. Um, you know, they say, well, nothing's ever happened. Well, nothing does until it does. So I'm leaving that out at least three of you. And you can be the bad guys and girls this time. <laughs> or the good ones. Yep. <laughs> so uh, obviously, any questions, uh, Jared, I'm more than happy to uh, further clarify. But, um, you know, basically the city's insurance company was unwilling to opine because they don't want to take any liability for this. Um, it's a good hometown feel situation to have the cheerleaders ride on the fire truck. It's just from a legal perspective and liability perspective. It's an utter nightmare. So if they were to fall off or get injured or, you know, have a bit be alone with a firefighter, it just, it's a bad thing. So there's really not... I thought about this in great detail. There's really not a great way to uh, relieve the city of any liability. So no matter what, it's going to be a risk. So that's that's the facts of it. I'm more than happy to hear anybody else's opinions. No, I agree with that 100%. I mean, there's, there's no way that we want uh, want our children in the city to weather an accident or whatever to get hurt. Especially on the city vehicle fire truck. I think that uh, I don't want that on the radio or the front page of the newspaper that somebody fell off a fire truck. And uh, whether they signed a waiver or not, I don't think that's legally binding. I think Jerry can verify that for sure. Um, 
My only suggestion is why not let them uh, walk in front of the fire truck? They can walk in front, they can walk behind, they yeah. can do cartwheels the whole way down Main Street yeah. or have their own float. I mean, we don't even have firefighters in this one, we allow children. Right. That would, that would be a point that's made in court. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's generally frowned upon um, uh, for circumstances like, like you can get waivers and they're more uh, upheld generally when you're going to a library or a field trip that's a social, that's an educational experience, things like that. But these kinds that are that are not, that are really more entertainment type issues, that just they look uh, the courts will look for anything they possibly can to get them out of it. Yeah, and uh, they they've got a long time to do it. Yeah, and one of the largest issues is the fact that they're online, right? So they it's hard to basically guarantee that the parent has the right to sign their child's rights. The general rule of thumb throughout the United States is that um, a parent cannot sign away the the life of their their child, um, and especially when we talk about what he just mentioned, is that they just sign off on it. You know, it's like yeah, you know, I like it. And I, um, obviously, the, the insurer verified my yeah. supposition sure. on that. I'm not, I'm not a personal injury attorney, but um, I think this is pretty well known by most attorneys in a way. Yeah, and, and, risk. and on the community side, you know, it, it will not go unnoticed. Obviously, um, you yeah. know. A lot of these uh, cheerleaders and their families will be quite upset with uh, with a no vote for sure. So there's there's two sides of it, but you know I think that uh, ultimately, regardless of how you feel about something, um, the right and wrong has to shine through. So uh, I would just simply commend the, the city manager for stopping this long enough to look at it. Certainly, anyway, because we said to me it was wholly inadequate. Yeah, sure. So, is there any other comments, questions? No, just because we did it in the past, so we still make it wasn't a mistake. And thank God nobody got hurt, but uh, I don't see how we can go forward with this. I'm I'm looking at it, um, you guys looking at it from a legal point, and that is very important. But I, when I read it at home, I was looking at it, what is a minor cheerleader, a female with a little short mini skirt doing riding on a red truck, <laughs> fire truck, <laughs> anyway? Yeah. I mean, is that just sexist or what? That's how I saw it. I don't know how everybody else saw it. Fair enough. So uh, would we need a motion for denial or? Sure. Um, I, no, I, I I think that's the city manager's decision ultimately. And, and uh, but, but you're basically giving them advice as to, so you can either have a motion or not, it doesn't really matter because. It, well, for the, for the city manager's sake, I think we should have a motion. Okay. That would take the uh, blame off of him and put it on the council, the elected official. Sure, sure. I'm sure we all shared it throughout. So <laughs> then instead of signing the waiver, they're just gonna not ride on the truck at all. They basically wouldn't be allowed to ride on the city park. We have a question out there. Yeah. Just give your name and address and the microphone there. Okay. Yeah, Eric Wilson. Um 1445 South Carolina. Yes, sir. You know, you know, giving the, and this may be some more ammunition for you, but given the recent activity where the young person or the young man or whoever it was that uh, went in, uh, rode wow. his yep. automobile in the, in, the, uh, parade. in the parade and hit those, yep. you know, I mean, that can, all, that can easily happen. Somebody could be, you know, sure. you know get away and, and, and hit the fire truck. So, I mean, that may be some. Well, issue. you bring up a good point because also my thought is that, heck no, but what that fire truck needs to go into action and you've got kids on top. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, there's there's a lot of lot of things, a lot of ways you can say, you know, let them down and, and let them first yeah. know, the Chilean folks know that, you know, this is not appropriate. I'll let you tell it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that comment. All right. So, uh, is there anyone willing to make a motion? I make the motion at item number D16. Yes. D16 be denied is what we were discussing. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a motion and a second. Is there any further questions? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? 
Yes. Council Member McKeer? Yes. Council Member Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Item number 17, we have CRA Advisory Board Member. Request waiver to apply for CRA facade grants. Just a little background here. Uh, uh, this request came to me and uh, I, uh, I did research previously and I just really just reworked the memo. But the, the key information is in the in, uh, in yellow and highlight on this. But uh, so you couldn't do it if it was a, a commissioner. Uh, but for committees that are below you that like planning, zoning, and CRA and so on, there is a provision in the ethics code that allows you to waive that ethical conflict. <laughs> by two thirds vote of the, the board that um, uh, appointed him. You know, so um, it would, if that was the CRA board, you would have to then open the CRA meeting again and do it. Or, as I understood, it was this board that was had done in the past. I believe it's the actual council that appoints the advisory board. You would have you would have to waive his conflict. Uh, by a two thirds vote, and uh, that would not relieve him of the responsibility to uh, accuse himself from any voting on that would affect him. But that that would uh, relieve him of the um, inherent conflict of he being on the board that makes these decisions and regulates these uh, these things, which would otherwise be a conflict. Yeah. Gerald, hey sir. Um, Gerald Snell, three hundred and twenty East Washington Street, Avon Park. You want to give an overview of what you're doing? Um, I'm just trying to uh, apply for the CRA uh, assignment we have open. And I understand I've talked with the attorney Bert at great length about, you know, how it is, whatever, and you exchange phone calls or whatever. Yeah. And I'm just asking the council for a waiver. Yeah. I may apply. Is it going to be on the facade? Yes. <laughs> just, I'm sorry. I'm just... <laughs> I, I just point out the two thirds two thirds vote. That's what's uh, called for in the statute. But since you don't have three, you have five. It would have to be four out of five would have to approve it. Just making that point. <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. Uh, obviously, the council and the area board themselves could not do this. Um, I verified with the ethics committee myself on that, and uh, but any lesser board or any other citizen obviously can. So we have a legal way of uh, him being able to apply for it. Really, the only question that I can see is just, do you want advisory board members applying for grants? Um, you know, is that seen as, as a good thing or a bad thing? That's, that's honestly the only question, um, but there's no legal ramifications. Well, the comment I have on that is that uh... First of all, we have a difficult time getting people to serve on the board, let alone stay on the board. Yeah. And to go back to one of our earlier arguments, we don't want to put somebody in a position where they have to get off the board for a certain amount of time in order to apply for a grant yeah. and then come back on the board. So to me, I think it's the fact that there, every member of every board is a volunteer, a citizen of the city. And I'm grateful for everyone that served on every single board. Okay. And so, but, but that being said, I don't think that there's no reason why we can't allow them to get that waiver because I'm in favor because they deserve it as much as any other person or homeowner does or business owner at that. And uh, so I, I'm all for the waiver myself. And uh, I know that it's either that or asking to leave the board for a month or two and come back on that. So therefore, that doesn't make any sense to me either. That's probably what some of them would do. So. Yeah. So on something that's uh, highly competitive, like the um, uh, with the Guardian program there, with the CDBG, I mean, I, I could easily see how a board member getting something like that would be highly controversial. But in this particular case with CRA, I mean, how many years do you sit there and I mean, you don't see the money like spent over years. and over and over and over again? So I don't think there's going to be much of an issue there. And uh, so long as it's legal and there's no ethical issues, I, I don't really see a problem with it. I'd like to say something. Go ahead. Gerald. Yes, ma'am. I know you, we go by how long? Mm -hmm. Since we was what? Five, so you, six years old? Yeah. Do you think in the community that me and you live in, uh -huh. do you believe that they're going to have an issue with you getting a grant when you and I know both 
you, you and I both know that there has been a lot of applications that has been submitted in the soft side. And not only have they not got approved, but they haven't even got an answer back. So now all of a sudden, you sit on the CRA board and you get approved. You don't see a problem with I'm that? I'm getting ready. Uh, I'm going to apply once I receive the No, paper. I'm sorry. You, you're getting ready to apply. Right. right. And, and one thing I know about you, by sitting on the CRA board, you know how to fill out an application. You know exactly what to do to get your application through, right? Which me and you know a whole lot of them don't or, or pretend like they don't. So I ask you this question. Do you believe that the people that lives on the south side where me and you live, going to think something is wrong with that, that they got disapproved for something. No one never told them why, but you, the chair on the CRA can get approved. Do you believe that that would be an issue? Do you believe that would come up? It might be an issue. They might think what they want to think, but let me share this. But you don't think, let, but, let, let me finish, let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. You don't think that little bad, that, that, that's, that's crossing the ethical line there at all? You don't no, think so? Okay. Um, not only am I planning on to apply, mm -hmm. I have been going around handing out applications, helping people to apply. You do that. You I do have that. done that. And, and you should. Yes. And you should. So, you know, I don't see a problem. You don't um, see a problem. No okay. And I think the only, only issue that people in the past that didn't get grants is because originally they had to pay up front. And I think everybody on this council, the previous council, always said that was a hardship for them to come up with five or ten thousand dollars to do stuff, and then get the money reimbursed, which was fifteen hundred, then two thousand, three thousand, five thousand. So now that we've changed all those rules, and we already see we got a bunch of applications tonight as well as for the next meeting, I think now that people on any part of the city that's in a CRA position can apply for the grant, and I think that. Uh, any application that ever got approved by the CRA that brought to this executive board, I think every one of them always got approved. Yeah, I mean, if there's a way to approve a request, it, it gets approved. Yes. But uh, I mean, the question, like I said, is, is not a legal one, it's just no, simply a not. political one. So, you know, Gerald is going to suffer the, the win or the fail of the, of the political. So it fully rests on him. And, uh, you know, I, I think that he'll see that most people tend to agree with his with his side. So. Yeah, we do have a question out back. You know the drill. Brenda Gray. <laughs> Good evening, Council. I forgot to say that. Uh, Brenda Gray, 410 East Lake View Drive in Avon Park. I would just okay. like to bring to the attention of this board. Um, um, first of all, Ms. Taylor is, is correct, and I commend Gerald for, for applying, um, but it's going to look really, really bad because you just had a CRA board member got off of the board because she could not apply for a CRA grant that lives on the south side. You all remember that? Ms. Ms. Burr, she was a CRA member, and her reason for getting off of the did, board. Did she apply for a CRA board? CRA, CRA board itself. Advi this, advisory this, board. Yeah, yeah, she was on the advisory board. board. The same thing would apply to her. Is applied to him. Yeah, but but no one brought that to her attention. No one said that to include this chair, he, who he, probably knew that at the time. He he the the board, probably did not know. He but I him. just want to bring that to your attention. Now, I mean, I understand what he's doing. And I understand what the council is doing, but it's going to look really, really bad. Thank you. So I just going to say he called and asked me a question, and that's why. I'm and I did also call Tallahassee Ethics, and they told me the same thing that you told me, Jim. Right. I told him to go ahead and call Tallahassee and put the ethics like hotline just to make sure he feels comfortable. And the memo that you did in reference to someone else who's still sitting on there, that letter that was given to everybody is he'll tell you Correct. sitting on there now. The same one that's in your pack that they all have and they've had it for months. Yeah, I mean, it's true that information is key. Um, you know, being uh, involved in the city definitely makes you aware of how the city works and some of the, you know, intimate workings of it. But I mean, it's no different than Jerry has a leg up being a lawyer in law matters. You know, that's what he does. So, 
it goes with the territory. It's not uh, to the shame of someone else for not understanding when someone else does. So anyway, um, any further questions for Kira or any other comments? Uh, I don't think we should penalize him just because he stepped up. I say that if Gerald was on the planning and zoning committee, the housing authority committee, yes. But because he is on this particular committee, I say it, it just doesn't look right. Okay. It just doesn't look right. Would you think that it was a conflict for a planning and a person on the planning and zoning board to get a zoning change to build a home or to start a business? Of course. Why? Because they sit on that committee, just like it would if I can't get one of these theories. Because we, we discussed as, it as I'm, a, I sit on the mothership. Right. And I say yes or no who get one. It needs to be said on record that most people know I'm uh, just bought the old home 1263 Memorial Drive. Mm -hmm. A lot of work to be done. A city council member came and gave me an application. I hadn't even moved in yet. Mm -hmm. Told me, you just submit it. I got you. Okay? Now, never submitted it. You know why? I wouldn't even own the city council then. Think at, at a moment, at a moment I was thinking about running. Mm -hmm. I just thought there was other people in the neighborhood that could have used it more than I did. That was that was the number one reason. And number two, I found out once I got on the city council, I couldn't do it. But guess what? I wouldn't do it anyway because I think it's unlawful. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely your decision to make. Yes, sir. It is. All right. Gerald, still wish to continue? No, I'm done. Okay. Yes. You continue with your request. Well, that's yes, in my way. Yes. All right. So, request is on the table. Is there anyone willing to make a motion? I'd be happy to make a motion to approve a, a waiver for a CR grant for Gerald. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McCure? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? No. Deputy Mayor Benign? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you, Gerald. Gerald. Thank you, Gerald. All right. Council. Oh, yes, sir. Go ahead. I got to go grab my sister. Um, as far as public participation, I just want to throw this out there. We talked about it years ago when we had the hurricane, remember, and we wanted to come up with a disaster plan for getting ice or whatever. And at that time, oh, the city man. manager shot that down or whatever. I would like to see us in the future come up with meet a board or something in case this community goes through a hurricane anymore again in the future, that we could get ice from a company and any much needed supplies. Uh, the mayor and uh, Mr. Bernard were very helpful in um, getting a pallet of ice that we sacrificed, went over and picked up, and others turned us down yeah. that we thought would help us. But they were there. And I would like to see us come up with a committee in the future, a disaster planning committee for the city of Avon Park. Okay. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. City manager updates. For the update, can we go back to D9, the, the resolution 2021-17, because I wasn't clear and I had staff each on side of me tell me one thing or another. Okay. That was the uh, resolution for the, the interest rates for the residential. Yes. And then you were asking for another resolution for the uh, commercial. Yes. What did we decide to do on this one? This one is five and a quarter percent. Correct. For 20 years. Correct. There was no vote on that. There was no vote? No. Yeah, we did. The resolution, yeah. the resolution didn't vote? We, we did vote on We just didn't vote on the commercial one because it's going to come up at our next meeting. Okay. Melody is right and then clerk is wrong. <laughs> I, I believe it was, it was five to zero. Yeah, all from it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We got that clear. No problem. You all have to look it down. <laughs> Don't let them. I told her it's tough running Zoom on that. So. You own them now. <laughs> um, let me get some more. 
uh, fam. Update on that. I talked to the deputy mayor today, but I, I brought a um, an email that uh, Jerry and I both received. This was on November 17th um, from our your outside counsel, uh, David Bernard. I'll read off to you. It's extremely well written. It says uh, I'm re he, he's talking to Bart uh, Barnes, who is the manager of Orlando Airport District Office. He's the the big dog up there in charge. Mm -hmm. Says Bart, I'm reaching out since it's been quite some time since we heard from your office regarding the draft lease of Avon Park Executive Airport. We provided a draft of the lease FAA review on August 30th. In your email of September 20th, you indicated the FAA was trying to complete its review by the end of September. On October 4th, I checked with you to see if you had a date for completion for the FAA's review, given that all parties wish to move forward. Your response of October 22nd indicated the FAA continued to work on this review, but did not have an ETA for completion. And as of this, as this is an uncommon event, you and your colleagues wanted to be sure that this was thoroughly reviewed. Florida DOT completed their review some time ago and provided a few relatively minor comments. We're now hoping to complete the governmental review process by obtaining the FAA approval of this lease. We certainly understand this is not a common request and the FAA needs to give this a careful and thorough review. However, we are about to head into the holiday season and we are very concerned this matter will slip into the new year. Can you, we provide any assistance to you in this review? We would be more than happy to arrange a video meeting, conference call, or in-person meeting with you or your colleagues to answer questions, discuss any changes that the FAA may feel are necessary and the like. This is a very important matter for the city of Avon Park, but as we have indicated, the city has agreed not to move forward without FAA's concurrence. Um, how can we help expedite FAA's review? We have not received a response back, and the uh, deputy mayor had actually reached out to Lowell today, and, then, and Lowell um, spoke to me, deputy mayor. Yeah. Without even knowing about this email, I knew that it had been uh, a few months since uh, anything had been brought up about the lease agreement with uh, FAM and the airport. And so I decided to call Mr. Clary myself to see if he could tell me what could be done to basically get the process to move forward or what the delay was. Mm -hmm. But I too would like to see if we could get this completed by the end of the year because I'm afraid that with the holidays, if we don't do something shortly, that things will just be carried on. And who, and who knows when they'll they start from scratch but uh in the conversation i had with him uh one he did eventually tell me that uh, he had sent he sent this uh letter to the uh, faa as well as others in the past and that uh you know that he was hoping that this would get them going in the right direction he also told me that you know like the thing said that there wasn't any real problem with fdot and that there was actually no problems with the mr clary or mr Baynard, the Barnard, or whatever, the uh, attorney, that they actually had the, the lease agreement ready to go. And that uh, they're just waiting for the FAA to say, we don't have any issues with it. And so I asked him, I said, well, did you think it would be a helpful thing for the city to go ahead and uh, make a call and preferably send a letter, maybe even make a motion to let them know that the city would like to uh, move forward with this? And he said it would be a a, a big help that the city did because they would like to know that you know that the city is uh thinks that this is the right direction to go and that they didn't have any major issues from the attorney side or from the uh, consultant side and so that's when i called the city manager and i thought that it'd be better off if we went ahead and had the city actually uh you know ask the city manager to write a letter and send it to the orlando office uh faa ask them that you know we'd like to move forward with this and uh, with that being said, those were the members that are on, new on the council that uh, Mr. Clark, who was heading up the fan agreements, that met with all previous council members one-on-one -on -one, probably over a year ago to discuss what the ideas were. And he'd be happy to meet with any of the three of you to describe exactly what this lease is going to do uh, between them and the city. But uh, I think it's to our advantage that we need to, uh, first of all, get you on board so you know exactly when it comes up for the vote, you know, which way you'd like to go with this lease agreement. 
as well as to go ahead and let the FAA know that we think we'd like to go ahead and, and get a response from them as soon as possible so that we can move forward and know one way or another exactly how they feel. So I, I actually think that we should uh, have the city manager write a letter uh, and, and maybe we could even, I don't know whether we need to make a motion or make a comment here, but I'd like this council to go ahead and say that we approve the fact that uh, we'd like to have a uh, move forward with this lease agreement as far as getting the uh, comments from the FAA so we can take a vote on it as soon as possible. I'm just going to make a comment, not positive or negative as to that proposal, but my perspective is that having dealt with administrative agencies in the past on many occasions, that um, at some point they get, if they feel like somebody's pushing them, they're human beings, this is not, you know, maybe proper etiquette, but Sometimes they just take it to the max because they're being pushed. And um, um, I just throw that out there as a possibility. You know, it's too much, it's too much poking, the bear gets mad. Well, it might, it, I talked to Lowell, he said, I don't know if it's gonna help or not, but they're gonna send me their telephone numbers and they can actually call this part. Yeah, I, I would just go by the fact that he told me that he thought it would be a good thing for the city to do. Yeah, uh, and I have less of a problem with 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 the telephone call because he can he can see he can he can uh, then appear more you know conciliatory and, and nice about it. Whereas a letter looks just so you know when you guys are going to get done. It looks like this letter. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that's. That, that's that's not inappropriate. I think at some point you have to say something. Otherwise. Right. Yeah. I think he. We know what he said in there without saying it. So. Sure. Yeah. I don't think that a, a vote necessarily would be appropriate, but it's certainly fair, and it would definitely come across from colleague to colleague for you to say that, hey, my bosses, the council, have really been hammering me. Right. Uh, when is this going to get done? They really want to see some action here. You know, please give me something I can tell them. You know. So. Yeah, I think that the council as a whole obviously wants to see this resolved one way or another. So, so is the city manager. And yeah, maybe, maybe it's stuck on that. Yeah. 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 I, I, I heard you say. Yeah. 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 I understand. Definitely, we're not ordering them. It's just a please, please help me out here. I, I did ask Lowell, and I'll pass on. I said, why do you think it's taking us so long? He said, there's three reasons. One, the government, you know, almost shut down, so they were scrambling. Two, this infrastructure bill with the trillions of dollars are scrambling it because a lot of it's going to airports. And three is they do not deal with a lot of P3s. Uh, they're bureaucrats and they have a hard time sometimes making decisions. That's why I call it pull the trigger. So, sure. Okay. I agree with Paul. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think JT's on too, so he heard of it. He's on me more than council, so. No, he isn't. Let me get on here. Am I on? No, Sorry. Yes. we don't need you. You can just listen in. You call me enough. Um, you just kidding, JT. He yeah, just, hey, he's, JT knows. JT has the building. Um, we put out an RFQ for to look at other CPA firms. Basically, because of being late for the past four years, enough's enough. Getting old. It's getting very old. And um, we contacted John Davis um, and let him know what was going out so he wasn't surprised. So sure. if you happen to see it's out. So the mall bid is out. Um, we've also got an RFQ that Jerry did for us for a foreclosure attorney for foreclosing on some of these properties that's out. Maybe it will be something, maybe we won't. But How right long there. has that been out? It, been out just a, uh, I think it went out last week, so I don't know that long. Um, we got a bit out right now, um, classic palladium for the roof. We're gonna follow up for one for the bathrooms. And then I'm gonna have Andy um, start working on one for the community center roof, but that brings up, we got new council here. Remember we talked last time, what kind of roof is we're gonna want there? So if you wanna- let your community center? Community center. Yep, so uh, currently we have a tile roof there. Tile roofs are very expensive, so that roof is in need of repair. There's some flat roofs there. Um, the previous council had discussed putting on a uh, standing seam roof, which is definitely a very classy upgraded roof over a standard metal roof. It's also the same type of roof that is on the library that's right across from it there. So if you wanna take a look at the library, you can go by there and see that. 
obviously it won't work with pick the color, but it's considerably cheaper than what a tile roof would be. So that's kind of what the previous council was saying, but obviously we can make whatever decision we want. I agree with that decision. Same, I think it should be the same color as the library, just to keep it consistent. Yeah. Keep in mind, it will last as long as we will, or longer. Okay. Um, last, these uh, CRA facade grants, we still, we didn't make it through the ones tonight, obviously. And I don't know if you plan on having the, your second meeting next month before Christmas or not, but if you could make a decision or mayor, I can get with you later about, because we got a lot of them. We've got what, probably 12 or 15 more that we, yeah. I say we plan for another hour uh, before our next council meeting. And uh, we'll get as many as we can get done. Okay, then, sounds good. Traditionally, we don't have a meeting uh, right before Christmas. Obviously, if it's dire circumstances, we will. But normally, we don't. So. Okay, we'll plan next meeting. Yep. Anything else? That's it. I want to bring up uh, this. Make David happy. The uh, iPads for council. So um, previous council. We've always gotten these books, and as you can see, there's hundreds of pages here. Um, something that was brought up by some of the staff members was to simply put that all on an iPad for us so that we could read it electronically rather than having to carry these books around and kill a bunch of trees. And, um, you know, the iPad has a few features that, you know, you can search the documents rather than just simply thumbing through pages. You can make the same notes that you always do. Some people like using technology. Some people don't. Personally, I read everything on my computer far more than I ever read it in the book. Um, more or less, this book's usually here just waiting on me when I get here, but I've already read it on my computer and made all the notes I need to make. So I'll let the council decide, but being that nothing against previous council, but being that maybe this council's a little bit younger than the previous one, maybe we'll have a better chance of getting some more technology. Well, and I, I'll add to that. I mean, if there's a, a holdout or somebody likes it, we can make one book, but we did kill a lot of trees and it's, very time consuming, but sure, it's whatever you want. If I can make you feel bad, the city of San Antonio, Florida, which I represent, uh, has 900 citizens and they all have iPads. <laughs> uh, they're, they're good commissioners, so I just throw that out there. Yeah, but not the person you. I think that'd be a good idea. I, I think it would relieve a lot of the stress that you have putting this book together. Well, well, you know, like we all sat in here Saturday, and that's that was my iPad. I didn't have it in two hundred something pages. I just going through my iPad on it. So, sure. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of other benefits. If you know, if anybody uses Apple products or anything like that, I mean, there's a lot of other benefits. So we tried this before many years ago, and they were, I think, HP notebooks or something like that. They sucked. All right, they were terrible. They lagged really bad. They're horrible devices. Don't get one. But an iPad is wonderful. I personally use one. Um, a lot of serious business people use them. They're great. Um, you can actually, if you want to take pictures of things, you want to send emails, if you know how to use one, man, it's just, it's really fast. It's a big phone. Yeah, basically a big phone. So I would need a class on that. I highly recommend it. So. This is an iPad mini. You probably have the full size pro. Yeah, so if, if the council, say, I mean, is anybody against it? Okay. Is the council for it? If they're for it, then I would have David put together a package of, and an actual proposal. We're not going to approve something that I just came. Well, they just need to know: Do you want the full size, twelve point nine, the eleven, or the ten point? For our eyes, I'd like the full size. Otherwise, have to work with for it, against it. I'm for it. Okay. All right. Have David put together something for us and. and We'll see how much it costs on that stuff before we actually prove it and everything. I want everybody to know exactly where it is. So. Sounds good. Okay. Anything else for the good of the city? I have one another item about the Christmas parade that is okay. next Monday. It starts at 7 p.m. And uh, normally, the city manager notified me today that uh, the chamber usually allows um, members of the council to carry the banner near the front. and. Uh, the last time we had a parade, which I think was two years ago, the mayor and myself carried the banner, but at the same time, uh, any, any member of the city council that wanted to walk by the side of us or behind us, 
especially if you're new, it may be a good idea to get out there, walk in the Christmas parade, and wave everybody that voted for you. I yeah, think that would be appropriate. Yeah, it, it's a big banner. It's like probably eight or ten feet wide. So yeah, yeah there's there's lots of room there. So anybody that wants to walk the yeah. council by all means. It's a mile walk, so it's definitely a good walk for your tennis shoes. But if you want to come, it's 7 p.m. sharp. Cannot be late. You're to leaving without you. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, it's Friday. Remember? 6 30 at the lighting, but 7 o'clock for the break. And where you start is at Anoka and Main Street. Yeah. So the uh we'll have the color guard typically goes in front, and then you have the mayor council, and then I believe you have one band or Something like that, and then you, all the flips start after that. So you're right in front of the parade. I'm looking forward to it. We missed last year. Yep. Be there, be square. Anything else for the city? Just how do you like the blue lights? Thanks for show. Yes. Blue lights. Yes. The blue lights on Main Street. Oh. I like them. I like them. I like them. Yeah. Yeah. I like blue lights. Oh my God. The blue lights are down so sad. I saw them last night. I'm like, oh my God, these are so beautiful. I want more. Oh, they are beautiful. Really Everybody hard. likes it. Are we going to put up the, uh, the little banners on light poles too, like we did two years ago? Okay. The only ones we have left are the ones hanging there. <laughs> so, where do all the decorations go when they're taken down? <laughs> um, they're, yeah. they, they're kept up in a garage or shed, whatever we call it, up there, basically on part of those property owners. We, we keep them at the uh, Jana building. Okay. Oh, thank you. The old Yana building? The old Yana building. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Anything else for the good of the city? Yeah. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, please. Seeing no opposition, we are adjourned. Thank you.